So the other day I bought this KU board and uh, the reason for that is because there's no schematic out there. And uh, I bought it as non-working because if you don't buy it as non-working it's like 10 times more expensive. And I also got one of these. Um, I actually got used for that because I needed the oscillator here because there was two broken or two leaky capacitor in here. Everything's fine, looks nice, nice and shiny. Just add some flocks and some cotton bud and uh, that's all you need really. So we install all the chip that I had in this uh, 40, 66 and we have no signal. No, it's not on anyway, but when it's on it's 700 milliamps, no signal. So, and we have a leakage here, as we saw, and I can show you if I haven't shown you. <laughs> And then it just leaked really badly, but that is a common fault on this KU motherboards. So, so I can't check if the clock is running, but if there's no signal, then there's usually no clock either, um, or there's something wrong with the path into the uh, can here, the modulator, but. Lots of trouble here, but I found a break here, so I can show you. It's really difficult to find. Anyway, if we look here now, which is about there, we have a clock. So let's try the display. It does work. It doesn't show us very well on this camera, but but it's much softer. Yeah, so that's working. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was working yesterday for like one minute, and then it broke down. So what I have been doing today is to putting in a socket, removing the um, VCO from this board. Also, it's a 25407. Should just put a socket in here. It's missing all the chips anyway. And uh, yeah, so now it works again. And uh, let me tell you what's happening. Just look at some uh, image I took in the microscope. So you can clear, clearly see that there are broken traces. So when I, you can also see after I clean this, you see there's actually no connection around this. And this is what uh, filters power to the VCO. So yeah. And this is the uh, crystal, which, which is uh, uh, capacitively coupled. And you can see also that one was corroded, but there was no breakage. Before I cleaned it. Here you can see how to clean up. There's basically nothing left. So, what I 
decided to do in the beginning was to try and clean it up as much as I could. Like in this clip here, I tried to get out all the gunk. And you can see that uh, when you activate the flux in there, there. I think the electrolyte is coming out. It kind of looks like it. I'm not sure what it is anyway. <laughs> but yeah. So. And there you can see. You have a broken tra trace. I have to magnify a lot to see that uh, broken trace there. And uh, I did a bodge repair just to see if it works. I don't want to do this actually. I want wires at the back. Here you can see I removed the ship today. And uh, yeah, not uh, doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like there's a break there, but it's no, no break there. But however, I haven't joined them because there's a break over here. So, so yeah, so it looks fine. And here you can see it's uh, completely corroded. So this is the fix I have. You see, I had to rejoin some traces. Then uh, it works. I had to also replace that chip. So, but now I'm going to remove all the devices here. It will take weeks probably, <laughs> and then I'm going to get this uh, board scanned. And I need a way to disolder this because uh, I managed to lift one of the. Um, what is it called? Vias or true hole plates? Because I was impatient. So uh, I, I have removed this one twice now, so it happened the other time. So I will be more careful, not so much heat as I used. So, yeah, so that's it. So that's a working KU motherboard. And uh, this video isn't so long. Maybe I'll show you later what I will do with this. I think there's no schematic out there, so that I know anyway, so I will uh, insert that and um, <laughs> I will try <laughs> scan this, do some sprint layout, get a schematic for it and then uh, preserve it for the future. So I just want to shout out the thanks to the people who have helped me out and uh, also FX Techno for yeah also his experience with this board so that was nice thank you very much so I will just desolder this in dosh and dash and then everything in dosh and then uh, I have uh, this in back in this and, uh, and uh, southwest two three and uh, yeah so when I started I used my desoldering 60 watt iron and that didn't go very well. So I started using the temperature control and wow, much better. I used a hot air gun to remove the pins or the ICs because I don't have a desolder gun. Works perfect. So I'm happy with this. Uh, it's back breaking so I'm only doing like one third of the time, so I'm documenting on the way. So, I'm going to scan this, so don't need the components to be perfect. I also had a problem with one of the RAM ICs because they were bent, so when I pulled it out, some of the pins broke. But I can always get a new RAM IC, but all of the other ones were fine, so. So I learned something there, but I'm really happy with uh, this. Use the solder pump and then solder wick after. So yeah, it's very nice.